Welcome and good evening, everyone. It's the 8th of June, it's a Thursday, and we have all made it somewhat successfully through this week. Welcome to the Nottingham Derby District Prayers for this evening. I'm Tim Annan Hood, I'm the PA to the Chair Desnook, and it's time for Digital Prayers. I invite you all to join with us for a few short minutes as we reflect and pray on not only the week that's just gone, uh, but wherever is on our hearts and minds, be that you joining us now live or you're watching this at a later date, you are most welcome here. So wherever you are, be you on a sun lounger enjoying this lush weather we have today, or staying inside the shade because you burn to a crisp when you're out in the sunlight, whether you have a cup of tea, coffee, something stronger, whether you're watching right now or re-watching later, you are most welcome here. So let us centre ourselves in this moment. Breathe and open our hearts to what God wants us to hear in this moment. Keep us, O lover of all, under the strength of your protection and enfold us within the eternity of your kingdom. For in you, is our hope, and to you we give all praise and glory, now and forever. Amen. I don't know about you, but my to-do list seems to be a bottomless pit from whence no man shall return. You answer one email, five more appear. That meeting that you think you're going to have in two weeks, that's actually tomorrow. The time you put to one side to read the latest Victoria Hislop novel. Yeah, that time came and went, so take that book and place it back on the ever-growing pile of to be read. The same can be said of weekly life within our church communities. No sooner have we finished the slog that is Christmas services, are we then on to planning Easter? Sometimes it feels like we are always in a church council meeting, or that there's going to be a church council meeting next week which is probably a reminder to check your calendars to see if there is a church council meeting next week. And don't forget that the repairs that were done to the car park, because they're going to have to be done again straight away next week, yesterday. There is a seemingly never enough hours to do everything that we want to do. We look at a clock and the hours have already passed us by, and the list of important things that needs doing keeps getting ever bigger. And sometimes we don't know how we're going to face this, but... Perhaps, though, we're just looking at it a little bit too big in scope. So what if we shifted our focus and started looking small at some of the things that we have to do? Nick Saban is a American football coach who taught his players to ignore the big picture. Forget about winning the championship, winning games, how many you need points you need to win, how big of a lead the opposite team has, the odds they're against you. Just focus on the next six seconds. Why six seconds? Because that's the length of time the average American football play lasts. So you focus on those next six seconds. Take a rest, then do it again. You're in practice. You practice those plays. You do them over and over again. You get it right so you know how you do them. And you put all your effort into those six seconds. And then they will add up to reach your goal. And he applied this initially just with the practice and the plays. And kept building and building and building. Until he applied this to the team in other parts of their life. Not only in the drills and the practice games and the games they're actually playing. But it expanded out of the games into their college courses, into their lessons, and even into their personal lives. There's a famous example of another coach doing this, Coach Ken Carter, who was a basketball coach in, I believe, California, who basically insisted that all of his players turned up to their games in suits, which seems a really small thing to focus on, but that all of them coming in their suits helped them get into the mindset that they were players and they were sportsmen and they would be respected. And that helped them later on in their own personal lives. Coach Saban, with this process with his team, 
led him to win seven college football titles, which the equivalency in the UK is about winning the Premier League about seven times in a row. Now, Saban's process isn't a brand new idea. It's been around for thousands of years. Actually, Marcus Aurelius was saying something similar by saying, you must build up your life action by action and be content if one achieves its goals as far as possible and no one can keep you from this. But there will be some external obstacles, perhaps, but no obstacle is acting with justice, self-control and wisdom. What if some other area of my action is thwarted? Well, gladly accept the obstacle for what it is and shift your attention to what is given. And another action will immediately take its place, one that fits better to the life you are building. If we focus small, but with good intent and wisdom, and we keep doing those same practices, those same plays, those same small things over and over again, they will add up and we will start doing them by instinct. Or if we apply this to church contexts, what impact does the small acts of prayer add up to? What does the small neighbourly check-ins with members of our community lead up to? How does one small, consistent act of service we do over and over again end up showing to others a glimpse of the gospel? I'll leave you with these with those thoughts and we'll end our time this evening with a prayer from Stephen Wigley, the Welsh Synod Chair. Heavenly Father, you call us to love you with all our hearts and soul and mind and strength. So when our hearts are troubled and souls weary, when our minds are confused and our strength seems gone, surround us with your all-sufficient grace and remind us once again how your power is made perfect in weakness, in the one who came to walk with us, in Jesus, your Son. Amen. Well, thank you all for coming here this evening. Uh, hope this has been enjoyable and fruitful for you. Hope you have a lovely weekend, and we'll be back here on Monday at 7 o'clock. So thank you for coming, and have a good rest of your day. <laughs> Bye.